Hello, and welcome to episode number six of Two Bits and Cents Investor Club. As always, I am joined by the one and only Robert. How's it going, man? Doing good, my man. How about yourself? It's good. It's good. It, it's been quite a week. It's already Tuesday. Um, it feels like Friday. That It's just been a long week. We're actually pre-recording yeah. this show ahead of time because I have travel tomorrow, so I'm not going to be able to do the show live. My apologies, but we'll pick back up next week with that. Um, otherwise, it's been a really crazy week trying to finish everything off so that we could we could do this trip uh, in in some kind of peace. But it didn't help that the markets have been utterly crazy for the past week or two uh, on top of I, I, I swear, stuff. The, 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 those markets have been on roller coasters of their own, naming no names, GME. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. So, I mean, I was thinking, you know, today, maybe we could just kind of talk about it. If If you're a hardcore investor, this probably is just a chance to sit back with like a beer and just kind of unwind a little from all the craziness that's been going on. But if you're, you know, kind of new to investing, you're probably thinking like, what the heck is going on? And I'm not going to lie. It's hard to tell. Like my wife was asking, hey, what, what's going on? What am I hearing about this and that? And this was amidst the there was a day when I'm a, I'm a believer in CCIV. I've been investing in what I believe is going to become Lucid Motors. We've talked about this. There was a yep. day last week when it plummeted down like $18, $19 and trading was kind of halted for a while. And I was telling my wife like, hey, we just lost like $15,000. And so she's we've been kind of talking and it's hard to explain to her like what's happened. So I thought, why don't we take a moment and talk about there's the reality and like expectations versus reality of the stock market. People think it's like some magical thing that is perfect and is like this indicator of it's not. It's just a market <laughs> where people yeah, buy and sell sure. stuff. And I think people probably don't fully understand that sometimes. So why don't we just rewind a little bit? Tell us what happened this week. What What is going on with the world and The world and GME. went crazy over Reddit. <laughs> and, and, and for those of you, of you that don't know, you, you probably do, but, you know, Reddit is this is online, uh, almost like forum post chat. Um, and there was a bunch of people that got onto Reddit and... They picked on on uh, GameStop, and they wanted to just annihilate them, and they did. But it backfired, and it ended up that they ended up making what was it four hundred and something odd percent over their their initial value. Are you talking about the the short sellers who who shorted it, or the redditors who are running it up? Both. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the, the it, full it went four hundred percent both ways, and it was it was. From from an outside point of view, I I had no. Did did you have any skin in in GME? No. Um. As a kind of a fun joke, on a Friday night or something last week, or one of the nights last week, I bought a couple hundred shares of of GameStop and AMC, and I actually sold it like later this week. So it just to just just to give me a reason to check on them because I felt kind yeah. of out of the loop. I have had my own bet. Right. Like we've been betting pre news about lucid motors so that is all the excitement that i need like i wasn't trying to get into it but if you rewind a little bit speaking of which uh, lucid uh, or cciv right now they just topped their 52 week marker again for the seventh time in a row in seven days like since we recorded it last week they've topped themselves seven times in a row and it's i mean at, at this recording it's 32 uh, the high was 35, um, and their after hours trading right now is 30, 33 and change, 30, 33, 34. So, I mean, they're on top to, to track it again for, for tomorrow again. So. so, you know, not to like take credit for this, but we've, we've been talking about this for a while. So since you're talking about the market in general, let's just do a quick little recap. Um, Tesla's earnings was announced last week. We did a video about it talking about what was kind of unveiled. And the reality was there was a little bit of a dip down from the 880 they are now all the way down to how low did it, did it get? Did it get to? I, I saw it get down to 810 and then I saw uh, it looking. Seven, 780. 780 was the low. So I bought around 810 or 815. So, you know, I have friends who always ask, oh, the earnings call, are they going to be good or bad? Or am I going to sell or is it? Relax. This is Tesla. The beauty of Tesla in my portfolio is they give me zero heartburn, no stress. Yep. The reality is my Tesla I'm holding for the next five or 10 years. It's so easy. Everything else is like 
you know, calculated risk and kind of extending myself out. But Tesla is a long term hold. So when they took I, that I think dip, we talked about it before, I bought more. Ricky. How, out of curiosity, since when you first invested in, in, in Tesla to where you're at now, what percent are you up? It's like 500%. I'm I'm about seven hundred and fifty percent up, so I'm 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 with you on that. I mean, yeah, it's just it's it's a it's a no heartburn hold. I mean, it's it's one of those that you just hold. <laughs> yeah, and um, that's not to say that you know just good companies can get to a point where they're so big, eight hundred billion dollar market cap, which is what Tesla is, that you might think now might be a good time to to take profits and go move elsewhere. But the reality is their their time horizon. And their product roadmap is incredible. I have yeah, no they, desire they, to get out. Imagine they, they what Cybertruck will do. Uh, to... for, uh, so, uh, I said, I mean, last last week we we were talking about it actually at the end of the the, tes- the Tesla show, and we said, you know, fifteen hundred by the end of the year. Um, Morgan Stanley released their prediction for it, and they're calling twenty two fifty by the end of the year. Yeah, I saw I saw another analyst calling it around twelve hundred as their new target. So um, yeah. Clearly, there's 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 room to grow, and they've got tons of stuff to be excited about. I think the battery storage, the the stationary home storage, is going to be a huge part of their growth. Uh, solar, they're picking up steam in a major way. They're rolling out way more solar roof. It's just every part of their business is just blowing up. Forget all that. How about just the fact that Shanghai Gigafactory is getting ready to and and at full speed ahead and producing uh, oh. the reason why it's when, the biggest when, market when in the shanghai world. gets up and going at full speed it's going to be amazing exactly absolutely so, amazing with tesla honestly i was just telling my buddies in our little chat earlier robert when earnings come around and you're looking to ha- park long-term money wait for the earnings and if you think tesla's gonna take a dip great time to buy at a 10 percent sale <laughs> that's kind of the way i look yep. at it um yeah, I mean, so that's, that's, tesla. that's exactly what it is so so that's Tesla. Um, otherwise, I um, I I'll tell you what I, I think I mentioned this to you uh, today. The shock uh, stock, and I I feel I feel like I should have invested more. I had a, I had a chat with Mark Fronmeyer, who's the CEO of Archimoto, on my channel. Yeah, and he is an awesome dude. We we talk on on Twitter. I'd like him to be the first guest. Maybe when we get to some number of episodes and stuff, we can have a guest well, on the show. I want Mark to be one of our first guests. Speaking of which, you know, we crested 600 subscribers the other day. Yes. That Don't, is absolutely amazing. We want to moving. say thank you to all of you for, for, for subscribing and believing in us. So uh, things are things are definitely picking up. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't. Well said. Couldn't say it better. Um, thank you to all of you guys. We're, we're looking to just keep keep this thing going. Barakimoto is up. Uh, three hundred percent in my in my portfolio since I bought them, I think, in like August or September of last year. So, okay. Amazing so, story. I'll, I'll I'll ask you about Archimoto then. Do you consider them a strong buy now, or is that uh, that ship sailed? So the the three X that I've experienced puts them at around a billion dollar market cap. When I think about like the Deliverator uh, and their kind of where they are in terms of having a factory, Sandy Monroe is kind of getting on board to get them to a better scale in terms of like full rate production. I think. They're pretty well valued now, and I think there's still room to grow. Um, it might probably it might probably closer to when they start s- shipping stuff. The deliverator is really interesting because we're still in the heart of the pandemic, and you talk about like being able to deliver food and parcels and things and sm- in urban city environments and stuff. I think it's going to be a, a hit car, especially because like the the cost of running it and maintaining it will be so low. So my I would say that two billion dollar valuation is probably pretty fair for where they are. So I would say there's still room to grow. They're at twenty six bucks okay. a share, and fifty bucks a share would put them at around close to two billion uh, market cap. And based on where they are and what they've got, kind of in hand, uh, that doesn't sound unreasonable to me. But that that what, that one, uh, ticker? FUV, which is their fun moniker for fun utility vehicle, which. If you've seen the pictures and stuff, that's exactly what it is. And they're building oh, yeah. a they're they're building a rental space in San Diego eventually. So you'll have to come out here for for that and we'll 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 rent one for a couple of days or something. Well, I mean, uh well, speaking of which, you know, a year ago today, uh we were uh, actually getting to, to know each other at uh, at fully charged and I actually got to help the guy unload them off the trailer. Um, really? 
So yeah, it was it was awesome. Uh, I got to to drive it off the trailer. Um, and you know, speaking of you know putting our money where our mouth is, right there, that would be trade complete for tomorrow morning. Um, purchasing Arkimoto on on a on a recommendation. There you go. Yeah, um, exactly. Cool company, really awesome leadership. They're doing some really great stuff that I really like to see. And the people who buy them, I think, are going to understand that what you're really doing is changing how you view, like, urban transportation. If you're going and getting groceries and stuff, do you really need to be taking the big four-wheel, big sedan? And the more congested and the more urban your city, I think you'll you'll be surprised. Cool. Very cool company. Um, this yeah. one's a little bit off the beaten path. I think we've talked about this before. Um, Sundial Growers. Did you ever get into that one? I got in, got out, got in, got out, got in, got out. So you're a little wishy-washy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we can talk about this. It's not exactly like a sustainable uh, company in terms of, it's not like an EV company. But to me, this is another interesting market, right? I think um, yeah. Sundog Growers is pretty well poised to be, they're up, uh, looks like 12% after closing today. But overall, I'm up wow. about 80% on them. And they're... They're in a interesting space, right? It's it's not for everybody, right? Because cannabis products and stuff are probably controversial for some people. My personal take, not that it really matters, uh, but my personal take is I like to see more marijuana and way less prescription drugs. <laughs> I really think oh, yeah. the more we can get rid of fentanyl and uh, I don't I I forget the names of all the other stuff. Crazy, scary, like prescribed drugs, which are horrible for you. I would like to see all those gone and power put into the hands of local growers or anybody who's able to um, grow and distribute marijuana. So I'm a huge believer that you tax it, you regulate it, you take that money, you lower our other taxes, <laughs> make it easier to live in places like California and recoup the cost from marijuana taxes, which uh, is a win-win-win all around. So I'm, I'm yeah. very bullish on some of these industries. You got to really kind of know what to look for. Well, I mean, I'm not saying yeah. it's not a blanket buy, but take a look and if it aligns with your values, I think it might be worth checking into. I mean, me, me personally, you know, in, in my day job, you know, I, I work for a, a company that makes the lights for a, a cannabis. So for me, I'm, I'm all about, you know, getting it more aligned and getting it more regulated. So yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it's, it's good. And the more companies that are buying my lights, the better we'll, we'll all be. So <laughs> Yeah, another one you you can turn me on to um, because of the person who runs it, you know, uh, William Ackman was Pershing Taunting Holdings, right? Pershing Square yeah. Taunting Holdings. And uh, they've been pretty stale. I think there people are waiting for them to make a move. He's a smart guy. He's going to do something. Uh, P-S-T-H. So this is a special purpose acquisition company that is just waiting to target a company to, to acquire uh, they're still at a at a point where nothing's happened yet, and there's a little bit of restlessness possibly there. But he's well known. He is like if you're investing in this one, you just trust that uh, Blackman's going to figure something out and have a good target in mind. So yeah. that one's doing okay, pretty stale as well. But for me, the big movers are CCIV, which is up huge today, but just generally um, no news yet. I think we should do a special episode, Robert. What do you think? The night that we hear something. Um, we should do an episode and cover that one if it happens. I, I think I think that'll be good. I think we're probably going to hear something about that. I would say in about a week. Um, I mean, the, the follow up to that, and I think we, we alluded to this uh, last week, was the fact that Directv is no longer um, in talks with CCIV. They've officially dropped out, um, and the SEC filing also completes that they have in fact pulled out. Um, at t which is the parent company of DirecTV, um, has also confirmed that they've pulled out. So they've they've looked to change their outcome, and with that, I think that's going to be you know the the, the main player for that um, moving forward. Um, yeah, we can talk more about them maybe in another episode um, in in more detail. But that's kind of a rundown. Is there any other portfolio uh, item that you want to talk about? Anything that stood out to you this week? I mean, I, I'd actually like to talk about my big three players, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, Solo, that's one we've we've talked about before. Um, I never, uh, I never bought into that one. Uh, Electrom uh, Electromatic, uh, which is a company based up in uh, Canada. They're doing the same Electro thing Electromechanica. Yeah, uh, they're doing um, 
The same thing as Archimoto. They're doing a three-wheeled type delivery vehicle. Um, they've they're they're going SPAC. Um, they're they're going public through a SPAC. Sorry, um, the SPAC currently is S O L O. Um, it's a really nice low stable one. Eight dollars a share, you know, as of as of this. Um, and they, they've kind of sat there. They haven't really moved too much. Um, they're they're up five percent on the day, and they're about seven seven or eight percent on my portfolio. Um, but they're, I think that when they start to get some traction here soon, they're they're going to really start moving along. Um, you know, another one that I'm I'm really excited about is a brand new one that I, I just found out the other day. Um, ALUS um, is the is the ticker symbol for it, um, and they are a battery manufacturer. So the the company name is Freyer Batteries, F-R-E-Y-R Batteries. Um, and they have, they claim to have developed the next generation clean liquid battery. So it's kind of like a quantum scape battery, but not quite. Um, and we all know liquid how free? quantum scape, liquid free. So it's a completely dry celled, um, clean environmentally friendly, carbon neutral, you know, all, all the, all the good buzzword, uh, uh, sayings, um, they're, they're, they're looking to, to come out. And I think they could be a, a, a good contender here shortly. Okay. I think um, that one should go on the board for some research and we can try to see if we can cover it in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, on, on, on your side as well, um, you know, uh, TTOO, which is a, a, a medical company, um, it's just it's one that I've, I've believed in for a, a while. I've been holding them for way too long, um, and uh, they they all of a sudden had a, a spike the other day, and they kind of just popped up. And they're they're a nice low trading company. They're you know two dollars a share. It's nothing really substantial, but uh, it's still something. You know, if you're if you're looking for a, a nice dividend return. It's, it's definitely one to, to take a look at. So I think at this point, we, we, should, we should have a little fun and talk about what the market has been doing. So um, you've, you guys have probably been aware of what's going on with GameStop, for example. First and foremost, GameStop is a company that I think is on its way out. The, re the reality is people are buying games online, right? Steam cat catalog yeah. or the Nintendo eShop or the Sony, you know, sort people are buying digital copies of games. So that means that you're not going to have like a physical disc. You're going to go buy and sell and trade, which was GameStop's entire thing. And that was lucrative and it did well for a while. So kind of like writing on the wall, this is not going to be probably a big part of what they do in the future. Who knows? Maybe they pivot and figure out something else because they have retail locations and malls and stuff. Uh, not really something I like. I feel like that's very high CapEx and I don't like having retail locations like that. It's just a lot of cost, a lot of overhead. Yeah. But maybe they figure out something, right? But what happened was uh, there was a there was a hedge fund that was shorting them like 140 percent of 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 the GameStop uh, shares, and they were they were shorting. And what that means is we'll take your share today, we're gonna sell it, and we'll pay you back at a later time. The reality is we think that your stock is gonna be worth less tomorrow. So we'll take your share, ten dollars a share today. We'll keep that ten dollars. And when you want the share back in two months, we'll give it to you for $2 because that's what it's worth in two months. So it only works if the share price goes down. Share price goes down. <laughs> and I mean, it sounds like a decent bet, but the reality is it's a kind of predatory type of a thing, uh, short selling, because what it does is people who are holding shares, you know, kind of leveling the price, if, if you will, brings some equilibrium to it, now are seeing a huge volume of, of, of supply. And as a result, the price is going to start falling because there's all this new stock being sold. And as a result, probably more, more sellers and buyers and the price just starts to, to plummet. So it's kind of a predatory practice. And so these guys on Reddit, um, Wall Street Bets is the, is the subreddit you guys have probably heard of. We'll, we can put a link to it, Robert, if you remember. Um, yeah. But these guys kind of thought, let's screw it. Let's, let's mess with them. Let's, um, let's make them pay. And so what they did is they have a pretty big following and they reached out on social media, largely Reddit, Twitter, and they told people to just buy up Game, GameStop uh, shares. So as a result, 
their their theory was let's start buying them, drive the price up, and when the price gets to a certain point, you have a a short squeeze, which means hey, the price is riding up. You guys have short shorts on this. You got to cover your losses now because we need these shares back. And so now these yeah. billion dollar hedge funds were bleeding yeah. out money, and <laughs> this share went from like ten dollars a share up to at its peak about a hundred uh, three hundred and fifty almost four hundred dollars a share, which you can imagine the the slaughter that must have been for the for the hedge funds that were betting against them. Yep. So this sounds like market manipulation. That was the first thing most people I've talked to have said. Um, it is. But what you have to remember is that big institutions do this all the time. This is their playbook. The reason they're mad is because now retail investors, the little guys, are getting together and playing their game. Yep. So it's not really a problem of, oh my gosh, it's market manipulation. It's, hey, it's market manipulation and I'm not benefiting from it. Um, you want to jump I mean, into the, it, like the, 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 yeah, the, the whole thing about it is you know hedge funds do this to each other all the time. I mean you know cap, uh, you know uh, capital companies do this to each other all the time. They'll 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 short one and then another capital company will come in and, and try to, to to pick it up. Um, and at the same time, they you know that they're in communication with each other. They know how far to take it. it it's a kind of a gentleman's agreement that, you know, we're not going to take it too far. And the thing is with Reddit, you know, there wasn't anyone there to say, Hey guys, you know, we, we, we didn't mean to take it this far. And that's when it just took off. And of course, all of a sudden now these hedge funds are, 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 are bleeding money as, as, <laughs> as, as you said, it. And, they're, and they're fuming mad because all of a sudden they're just drained. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, that's what happens. So, um, but apparently they've got their next target. I don't, I don't know if you saw this AMC is now the next target for them yeah. to, uh, yeah. to take on as a subreddit. So again, be the funny, to see if that happens. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing here is they're picking like clear losers. I mean, GameStop, I don't think has a feature, which is a bizarre thing to, to be betting on. AMC is kind of the same thing. We're in a pandemic the rise of like streaming at home, like the the movie theater is never going to be what it used to be. It's going to be like this thing you go to once a year for nostalgia purposes, but yeah. it's not going to be like a big money making thing. So they're like almost targeting these companies that uh, or these companies that hedge funds are targeting as good short options and um, and and trying to make them pay for it. But what's funny here, and you have to remember, like if you're thinking, oh, you know, this fear of missing out, I've never had this problem where I have this fear of missing out and I need to go jump on this stock. Um, because first of all, it's a dangerous game to play. And if you're buying GameStop shares, you're not investing on fundamentals. You're just gambling on what, who knows what. And what will end up happening is it's going to be a game of musical chairs where, well, actually, hot potato, I think, is a better analogy. Whoever's yeah, left hot, with the potato loses. I mean, <laughs> the, the thing is, Ricky, you hit it right on the head. This this strategy that they've got, while it may it was lucrative for for a couple of people and it, it was it was horrible for a couple of people it's strictly gambling it is not solid investment practices because there's no um, fundamentals underlying your decision there's no fundamentals on on any of it there's no deep diving there's no research that's done i mean i I'll, i i can speak for myself but i mean i i look at a stock to buy and it's one that i've done a, a deep dive on or i have solid information on I've done the SEC research. I've done the, um, you know, the, the the deep dive. I've done the research into the the company. You, I'm, I, I'm, I know for a fact, you know, you you you're on the same level as me. You know, you do that deep dive research. Yeah. You, um, so you it's something you believe in. Um, whereas these guys that are that are doing it, you know, no no disembowelment to them. I mean, they they they've made the money, and you know, at the end of the day, that's what counts but they haven't done the research as to why it worked or why it came out the way it did. And, and that's the big thing as well. That, that's yeah. my takeaway from it. Yeah. My, my advice really isn't to the, the Redditors who are doing this. I mean, in a way, what they're doing is the same thing hedge funds do, right? They, they create buying opportunities. Like, for example, if you have billions of dollars under management, the power that you hold is massive. You buy or you sell, you start selling a bunch of shares, driving a price down. And let's say people have put like, you know, um, price floors and their, their, their trading platforms hit these price floors and automatically sell their shares. And then they swoop back in and buy them all back up and run up a price on it. The, the, the amount of power you have when you have billions in management 
It was ludicrous. Um, a power you and I will never have. But the idea yeah. is these writers are thinking they can do the same thing and get hedge funds back. You know, I don't have a problem with that because it's not like it's the same thing. It's the same game that they're playing. Um, the yeah. advice really is for you. If you're a retail investor, um, my honest opinion is don't get caught up in it. You're going to have a friend who goes, oh, my goodness, I bought uh, GameStop for $100 and, you know, I, I bought 10,000 shares and then I sold for $300 two days later and I made $20,000. You're going to have those stories, but for every one of those stories, uh, GameStop is at 90 bucks today. And so, yeah. you know, there's some guy who's panic selling. There's a guy who kept hearing about his friends making thousands of dollars and hopped on and say, hey, I have tw- I have $10,000. I'm going to buy $10,000 worth at 300 and I'll sell it at 600 and make $10,000. And instead, he's lost, you know, $6,000 or something like that. And yeah. and in a, in, a, in a fear and panic, he's going to start selling at 95 because he doesn't want to lose it and sell it at nine dollars or ten dollars which is where they're really they, they belong Probably so be, yeah so really what this is is just wealth transfer um the way this started was it was a major wealth transfer from very wealthy hedge funds to individual retail investors because again when that short squeeze happens and people with short positions are forced to cover that is when the bloodbath happened and that's where all the money was transferred but now if you're trying to ride this wave of me too and you know fear of missing out and uh, YOLO investors, there's all these funny memes and there's all this funny like online. I mean, did, did you see the one speaking of memes uh, with uh, Blockbuster? They, they put out a tweet and they said, come at us, Reddit. I'm like, <laughs> and for those of you that don't get it, Reddit, Blockbuster's been out of business for a long time. Um, and I uh, they're not trading anymore. They're 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 yeah. dissolved. They're like they're just nothing. like one location in Oregon. I heard or something. They're not. Yeah, and it's privately right. owned. It's not publicly listed, and yeah. you know it's it's great. And the fact that they can put out something like that and have a good laugh at their expense is is really you know it's just a funny whole funny thing about exactly. it. Exactly. So. Yeah. Exactly. So my my honest opinion is think about like the long position, like bet on the future. If you think that electric cars are going to be a big part of the future, then bet accordingly, right? I, yeah. I made a pretty big bet on Lucid pre-announcement, which means that it's a gamble in and of itself. Um, but the point is, if I lost all my Lucid money, like if the, the SPAC that I bet in, CCIV, Churchill Capital 4, if they were to dissolve and my, all my money would be gone, that would be a horrible day for me. But I, life would go on, right? I'm not going to be yeah. homeless or something. So the first thing is like, you got to manage that risk level. And secondly, you got to look at the kind of the, the analytics of it. There's a lot of like, well, there's I, a lot I of, think your wife would be a little upset about that. Yeah, I think no, I think she would. would be out in the, in, in, in the doghouse for, for, for a little while, but exactly. you, know, it, 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 you wouldn't be dead on the street. So exactly. Uh, but at my age, uh, I believe in a little bit of a risk uh, profile. I think that like park long-term money in places, you know, I have real estate, um, I have my house, so I have some value there. I've got a little bit of a savings account. I've got like long-term, you know, ETF kind of tracking funds and stuff, mutual funds for that. And then I've got my aggressive stuff. And this is where I take big, big strides and I take big gambles and big risks. So, But, but even then, it's kind of founded on some reality. They're, they're calculated there's, risks. Yeah, they're, there's they're, a lot of connections. And, and we, we, we've... Ricky and I both do a lot of research as far as, you know, our, our stocks. So, yes, it's gamble, but it's a calculated gamble. And that's the best kind. Yeah, in a way, investing is a bit of a gamble because anytime you take your money to do something with it, nothing's a guarantee. Your friend says, hey, can I borrow $100 because I'm going to go make this company and then, you know, in two in a year, I'll pay you back $200. It's a gamble. Maybe he fails and he never pays you back and you lose $100. In, in life, re- really, nothing is for sure. All the way down to just holding on to money. If you just if you just put all your money in a suitcase under your mattress, you're losing two percent a year. And the way we're printing money and the interest rates where they are now, that might even be worse. It might be three yeah. percent. I don't. I haven't really been tracking that this year. But your money is just eroding away. So you wait long enough, and it'll be worth nothing because you have a million dollars today, and you just sleep it under your mattress for thirty years, and you think I can buy a million dollar house today. You'll be able to buy a five hundred thousand dollar house equivalent in 30 years with all that depreciation. So the reality is nothing is, is safe. Um, you have to take some level of, of, of risk, I think, in, in investing. If you want it to grow. Yeah, which, which should be the point. Like we got to put our capital to work for us and slowly 
Like we start off working and we have very little money. And the whole point of life, really, the game of Monopoly is to do this. Over time, by the time you're 40 and you're 50, your money is out working for you, bringing you back 7% a year, something like that, um, which is a good return on the market. And um, which is a historical return of the last 150 years on the market. And you get to kind of relax and, and take a load off. So uh, the market is a crazy thing. By the way, really quick, um, you'd be surprised people don't realize this, but like a stock price has no bearing in reality. A stock price is simply how many people are looking to buy a stock and how many people are looking to sell a stock. If your bid price is not getting met because there's no buyers for your stock, the price will keep going down until there's somebody going, yeah, I'll, I won't buy for 30, but I'll buy for 25. And the price comes down 25 and there's a buyer and they line up. And line guy up A sells it and guy down. B buys it. Yep. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with what that company is doing. Like some, some there's, there will be days when people go, oh, the company's up 50% today. They didn't do 50% more sales. They didn't have 50% more hot dogs that they sold. They didn't have 50% more yeah. anything. It, these are, but, um, I mean, a lot, a lot of that, Ricky, is based on, you know, speculation on the street and, sure. you know, the, the word on the street. That's how that stock price gets driven. Um, I mean, you, you, you mentioned to it earlier, you know, when Tesla had their earnings call, you know, we were expecting relatively not great numbers from them. I mean, we were expecting a couple of good numbers. Uh, speaking of which, we, we do have to make a correction on uh, the last episode. Uh, we mentioned it was an eight thousand pound and five thousand pound, a six thousand pound press. Uh, it's an eight thousand ton and six thousand ton press. So that's that's my correction on that. The the um, Y is a six thousand ton press, and the press and the Cybertruck's gonna be an eight thousand ton. I mean, you um, heard it in your head, and it like it boggles your mind. It's, it's hard to to fathom. Yeah. But yeah. Exactly. Um, but I mean, the, the the we weren't expecting some of the 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 really interesting numbers to come out of there. And that's what was great about it is there was some really good numbers that came out and then there was some really bad. And that's why they, they took a 7% dive the next day. But having said that 7% dive, they've recovered now threefold on it. And yeah, they're back. as Ricky yeah. said, we, we, we got them on sale for, for 10% off the next day. So it was, it was good. We all enjoyed it, it. Exactly. And you mentioned speculative. That's exactly what the market is. You know, people are like when you go into an earnings call, People think, oh, if the earnings call is good, the price is going to shoot up. No, the price is reflective of what people think that earnings call is going to, to say. So a lot of times, yeah. that's why earnings calls, even when they're good earnings calls, like Apple is famous for this, they'll take a dip after. Because like people had built up this image that, oh, they're going to sell $500 million of this. And, they're, the, and they, they got close, but not quite there. And then they'll take a little bit of a, of, a, of a hit. These are all small fluctuations. It doesn't change the fundamentals of a company like Apple or Tesla. And if you believe in what they're doing and you think... They have really good leadership, really smart people who are building really great things. Put your capital to work, buy some shares, and let really smart people and the work and their labor uh, benefit you. That's kind of the the, the whole game. So the market is a <laughs> the market is a scary thing. You know, in in our in, in my culture where I'm from, my my parents are all about real estate. They don't trust the market. They've heard it can go down. Like, of course, it can go down. Real estate can go down. You remember in 2008 when home prices like sunk 50 percent, but something happened they came back. The home prices came back and so did the stock market. Um, I remember yeah. that I had some friends that were retiring around that time and they had to push their retirement out five years so that way their 401ks could recover. But they do. They, and they did because Apple is still making laptops and Boeing is still making airplanes. Well, th there's a little bit of a speculation. What does the future yeah. of travel look like? Boeing's got Boeing's under a little bit of hot water. I've been thinking about buying their shares. I actually think they're still overvalued. I kind of thought they'd have oh, a so bigger you, so hit. I, I, I've, I've held Boeing. So I, I, I've got a good chunk of my portfolio, probably, I'm trying to do the mental math in my head, probably about 10% of my portfolio um, is wrapped with Boeing, Southwest Airlines, um, American Airlines, and um, who else? Uh, United. Um, and it's really interesting because you, you watch them and especially, you know, United and American Airlines, they start out usually through through a good. And when they take a turn, Southwest usually lags them by about three weeks. Um, Boeing and, you know, of course, uh, um, Airbus and all those guys, they're, they're usually, you know, lagging them about three more weeks additionally. Um, so whenever they start moving, that's, you know, usually a good indicator as to something's going to happen. 
uh, be it good or be it bad, you know, there's, there's going to be something. But yeah, to what you said, you know, there's definitely going to be some speculation in the future about travel. I think that generally travel is going to become less of a, a thing, but at the same time, it could be that, you know, we use travel in different ways. So the reality is there's not really a clean, like, EV solution to air travel, rockets, and things like that. So um, I'm not sure if our viewers are interested in, in air travel or companies like Boeing and Airbus who build the aircraft. Um, really tough businesses to, to run. Uh, there's, there's such capital expenditure machines, and there's, there's a lot of risk in terms of if you have a 7 through 7 max and you have an issue and you're grounding an entire fleet, the next thing you know, you've got canceled orders and, and, and all that. So... I'm kind of curious. And, what do you think? Raise, raise, raise it in margins as well, and 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 raise it in margins. Yeah, um, some companies you met, like you mentioned Southwest has done well in times, but this is not going to be the year I think people thought. I think a lot of people kind of thought 2020 is the lost year. We'll forget about it. We'll have well Happy New Year's, we'll have New Year's Eve, and then 2021 will it'll all be over. And we're now one month in, and nothing has changed really. Uh, uh, vac- I, vaccines I, are going I, out. I think that you know the. The, the the regular you know what would have been the the general trades are going to come back probably September October time you know I, I honestly think this year is probably a wash for for the market as well um, unless it's an EV stock and you know uh, President Biden is now pushing his his EV agenda um, I, he did make that announcement uh, earlier that they're going to change over their whole entire fleet of gasoline vehicles to EVs. Uh, which would be great for the EV sector and the, the battery sector. So I'm looking forward to that. Very true. Um, I think it's, it's like over 600,000 federal uh, vehicles, which is a, a big deal. Um, Just as long as they don't go with Priuses, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's pure electric, battery electric. So it might be GM. I For some reason, I don't think Tesla's going to be in that category. Uh, for some reason, I... You know, typically, like, think of, like, a car rental. If you were to go to Avis or Enterprise rental car to get a car, it's those terrible cars that no one's buying. Like, no no person is buying these cars. These are, like, fleet cars, right? Um, yeah. Like, the Chrysler 200. Like some of these cars that no no one's buying. Um, I kind of think it'll be a kind of a similar story where it'll be companies like General Motors or Ford, possibly, maybe some of the other brands who are building EVs for whatever reason, but they're not that popular. They're not that good looking, like the Bolt, maybe, or something in that category of car where yeah, they're the, solid the, cars. The they're good, spark, they're uh, good cars. It's just that yeah. they're not selling and they're sitting on lots and stuff. And those would be like a prime candidate. Tesla's literally making a car and shipping it to you. Like there's no, like, there's no yeah. inventory sitting around. I, they're there, not there's no, the kind zero of inventory on those guys sitting. So yeah, I, exactly. I would, however, like to see the Beast, which for those of you that don't know is the, uh, the presidential limo. I would love to see a Tesla beast. I think that would be awesome. What do you think, Ricky? Yeah, uh, they're, they're such a young company at this point. They have like an entire lineup to fill out. Um, again, that sounds like a GM job, kind of, you know. Uh, yeah, probably but that would be GM cool. Job, but uh, it, it would be cool to see as a, as a Tesla job. So. Oh, no doubt about it. And, it, you know, made in America, American, you know, kind of the, the, the patriotic choice and stuff. I think yeah. Tesla really has to kind of push that more on marketing, like the made in America aspect. You know, who would have thought you'd, you can build cars in California? People probably thought it was impossible not too long ago. And yeah. here we are doing it. So, well, I, um, I mean, uh, everyone, you know, when, when I ride my zero, everyone says, you know, hey, where did you buy that? Well, it's made here in the States. It's made in California. So Santa Clara, way to go. Yeah, exactly. So this has been a kind of a crazy week. It was actually a pretty good day for me in terms of my positions and stuff. But um, I think it's a good reminder about the volatility and the nature of investing. Oh, uh, this is probably we can probably end on this. This is interesting. But you I use Robinhood, right? I have been using Robinhood for a the riskier part of my bets, the stuff that I'm betting more often or kind of trading more frequently. Um, the larger uh, amounts that I have are in E-Trade, which I, they're like long-term stuff. I, I just check on them on occasion, trade a couple times a year. Yeah. Um, but in Robinhood, I've been, I've been trading and there's a lot of controversy because Robinhood was uh, stopping people from buying shares of GameStop and actually even selling shares of GameStop 
and AMC for a while. So people were up in arms because hedge funds don't have these limitations. Like they got mad that GameStop was running up and now you're controlling us and not letting us trade and stuff. Um, Elon was on Clubhouse. Uh, we should do a little Clubhouse with, with our viewers sometime, by the way. If you hopped yeah, on Clubhouse, you cool. checked it out? I, I'm I'm on it. I've never actually done much with it. But, Me neither. Uh, yeah, I'm on it. Yeah. Um, he was on it and he, he talked to Vlad, who's the, the CEO of, um, of Robinhood. And he kind of mentioned that like they were forced from the like the securities commissions like to have certain deposits on hand and they were forced into you know these kinds of things they had to raise a billion dollars kind of overnight to keep operations running um what exactly it all means I, i'm not really too sure but um short of something catastrophic i'm probably going to just leave what i have in Robinhood. in robin hood there's some other options out there sofi which is a company i've used loans with in the past i, I i've heard good things about uh, there's weeble and a million others but um i think this is just a good time to take to reflect on the market and and the level of volatility and risk that goes into it. And wherever possible, like maybe you made money on GameStop if you were in it, or maybe you, you you sat out like I did and like you did, or maybe you lost money. Whatever the case was, make it a point to learn, to grow, and to remember that this is a um, it's a complex market. And the, the forces at play are not logical to understand because you've got big money interests. You've got Reddit now. <laughs> Yeah. On top of who, everything who else, thought that Reddit was going to be one of the you know, the hedge funds that you'd have to worry about. Um, I mean, so to to your point, yeah, um, I I use E Trade for 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 all mine. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, and we'll you know, I, I'm 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 flagged as as a patent day trader, uh, which means that I have to keep you know a, a certain amount of, of of money in my account at all times. Um, and I've got to keep a, a certain amount of, of transaction activity, um, which is a, an upper and a downer because I'm not anywhere close to the limit. I'm, I'm thankfully well above it. But at the same time, you know, it's it's always that downside in the back of my head. You know, am, am I going to lose enough on this trade that I end up coming down to my limit um, of to, to, to being in, in cold? So it's 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 one of those things uh luckily i'm i'm not anywhere close to that limit these days but uh um i'm definitely above it so yeah exactly i would say if if you're a young investor or you're a new investor the first thing you should do is take a small of money amount of money that you'd be okay losing right some people will say there's there's place where you can virtually trade um start there if you don't want to lose a single dollar just pretend trade yeah. and keep a track of when you bought and sold and see how you do and see how your how your logic and your thought process is working out, your research and all that. Um, I never liked that because I have a hard time faking it. I'd rather have a little bit of skin in the game. So when I was yeah, young, I, I would I'm, just I'm invest. The same way. I, 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 I need to have some skin in the game to, to, yeah. to do it. I, it doesn't have to know. be much. You know, it could be a, a thousand bucks or if that's too much, a hundred bucks. Robinhood, other, some of these other platforms allow partial... Uh, trades meaning you can buy like a fractional share of a company so if tesla's at 800 and you can't afford that you could buy 0.1 percent of a tesla share or something like that so you can buy fractional and, and shares. the good thing about that is you can also do you know if it's 800 you know every every month you you've got 80 dollars. just put 80 dollars in there and yeah. you buy your, your your tenth of a share and by the end of the year you've got a full share and then from that way forward, you've got a growing platform down down the line. Um, so yeah, it's it's there's, there's easy ways to go about it um, yeah. to to get into it with with little risk. Yeah, and, and a lot of people want to try and time the market and buy at the exact low and all that. The reality is, you can try to do all that kind of stuff, but you take long enough of a time window, you're not going to get them all right. You're not gonna you're gonna buy a little bit too late and sell a little too early. That's all fine. I think the bigger point is, you know. Yeah, to your point, I like that idea. Even if you don't make that much money and you have, a, you start with a thousand dollars and you're going to put thirty dollars a month in, um, you can buy fractional shares. And what's beautiful is you'd be cost averaging, which means if Tesla shares are going to go up or down, since you're buying at different times, you're going to average them out over over time. So you buy one share at one hundred, but then it goes up to two hundred and you buy one share, and then drops down to fifty, but you buy a share. And the next thing you know, it comes back to two hundred, and you've got shares and it kind of averages out. So, yeah. Do what you got to do to it's, learn. It's and... a nice, easy way to do it. I mean, to, to the, the way I started, and, and you can pitch the way you did it, um, but for a year, I put $50 aside into E-Trade. I didn't make a single trade, 
but it was just fifty dollars that was to sit there. And in, at the end of a year, I I had you know uh, just over sixty something odd dollars, and I invested it into one share, and that one just happened to tank, and I lost the whole entire thing. It was a valuable lesson to learn because as it was, you know, you learn something for every trade that you make. And I learned, you know, to, to kind of avoid this, this style of share. So I, I then started it again and I just happened to, to hit it with Maxwell. And that's kind of what, you know, drove my, my further spree on down the road. So. Yeah, exactly. For me, the, what I've always tried to do is kind of see, like a big change happening. Um, an early example, when I was like getting out of college, Apple was was pretty cheap. Jobs had just come back. They were kind of on a tear. The iPhone comes out. And, and I kind of told myself, and I, I remember this, it was like $100 a share a long time ago, which was, you know, like before many splits days. and stuff. Yeah, a long time ago, like 2008. <laughs> and I remember thinking like, oh my God, they're at an all-time high. You'd be crazy to buy right now. Um, that was back like when they were like a 10th or a 20th of what they're at now. But I remember thinking like, look, the iPhone is going to be big. I bet on thinking this is going to like fundamentally change culture. I'm going to buy a bunch of Apple. That was an early hit for me. Um, when Lisa Sue comes back to AMD and AMD's rise with the Ryzen, the new CPUs to kind of topple Intel's crown, which they've had for a decade. I saw that coming and I thought AMD is going to do things. That bet took longer than I thought it would. I thought when they bought ATI and they made some other bets, I thought they would pan out earlier. But I bought a bunch of AMD and a couple of years went by. Next thing you know, I was up 300, 400% on, on AMD. And Phase Energy, which is my solar microinverters for my solar panels. We talked about this before. I was a huge believer. Yeah. Mine are 10 years old. Never missed a beat. I, I was a big fan. Um, that one I have a huge amount of regret because I bought at like 4 or $5 and sold it at $10, doubled my money, and I was so excited. They're at $100 wow. now. If I, if I had just gone to bed and just forgotten about it, I would have like 20 x my return on, on Enphase. Well, I mean, I, I did something similar. Um, I didn't do it with Enphase, but I did it with Solar Edge. Um, I, I bought Solar Edge at $4. They're trading at 307 right now. So yeah, there you go. It's, uh, it's definitely one of those things where, you know, just sometimes you, you win, sometimes you lose. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm a believer in investing like long term. Yeah. Think about like what is going to happen. And, and like I said, just try it out. Talk to your friends and go, hey, what do you think the pandemic, this is going to happen? What do you, what do you think about food delivery, restaurants? What, where, where should we invest? Start to think about and build a model for the world and how like the current events and like the current administration, Biden coming in, that's going to change things. If you're an EV and a future sustainable ener energy investor, this is really good news. I mean, Biden's already back in the Paris Accord. He's going to get a bunch of EVs for the federal fleet. He's taking huge actions and he hasn't even been there but a week or two. So... Um, very exciting time. So try it out for yourself and just and just kind of kind of go from there. And if you have questions, leave us a comment. Let's let's talk. We want to open yep. up a Patreon where we have a little Discord group, like an investor club. We're gonna form that maybe in a month or two. We, we want to just get a little more traction, a little more uh, mo uh, momentum first. But leave us your comment. Let us know like, hey, here's what we're thinking. We'll do the same thing, and we'll um, we'll keep this thing going. We're, we're we're actually going to put a poll up for what you guys want to talk about next week. Good uh, idea. Do you want to talk about batteries or do you want to talk about EFTs and uh, dividend returns? Let uh, let us know. We'll we'll put it down in the in the description and, and on the Perfect. community page. So give it give us give us your input. Also, I'd be remiss if I forgot for a second week in a row. Robert is in a new location. He's got a new room. He's going to devote to the office for our for our show. If you have ideas for art back there. Or yes, some lighting I, or some other. For, for art, <laughs> uh, let's see, right, right over we here. We need to hang a bunch of like. Some good suggestions. So uh, get a big old Rivian to... R1T picture. Ah, that's what I can do. That's I can put one. my uh, my my signed uh, RJ poster that I've got okay. uh, back there. Um, and yes. Currently, it's right in front of me, but I'll put it back there so everyone can can see it as well. So there you go. Yeah, poll. A good good point. Subscribe, like, and share this video if you guys like it. We're hoping when it's live, it'll be even more fun because we can all engage together. But really, I'm just hoping this can be a long-term place where we can all talk investing and talk about the future that we want to see and putting our money where our mouth is. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Ricky. I'm Robert. I'm we'll Robert. I'm Ricky. Time. Yes. We'll see you guys next yeah, time. One of those two. <laughs>